Welcome back, today we're working on our Trail 125 again. If you haven't seen the first part of this build, be sure and click on that link in the upper right hand corner and check that out. For part two, we're going to build some crash bars for this bike. So I've already had to straighten out this shift lever once and I don't want to do it again, so some crash bars are definitely in order. Now you can go out on the internet and buy a set of crash bars, but if you've been watching this channel before, you know we like to make stuff, so we're going to make our own. The material I've chosen for this project is some 3 quarter inch diameter by 050 wall tubing. It's pretty close in size to half inch EMT conduit, but the conduit only measures about 710 in diameter and 40 thousandths wall thickness. Unfortunately, that means a standard cheap conduit bender won't fit the 3 quarter inch tubing. So why not just use conduit? Aside from the thinner wall, the conduit has a galvanized coating, which burns off into a nasty gas when welded and makes it difficult to paint. The mild steel tubing, on the other hand, welds and paints really nicely. So I figured it was worth a shot to try to modify the cheap conduit bender to bend 3 quarter inch tubing. Since I already had a 3 quarter inch ball end mill from our previous project, I figured starting out in the milling machine made a lot of sense. And this 3 quarter inch ball end mill makes pretty quick work of the soft aluminum. All I'm doing is opening up the sides and just touching the bottom of the groove with the ball end mill. There's no complicated measurements or procedure for this process, I just used some blue dicum as a guide and manually controlled the depth. After finishing up in the mill, you can see that it's anything but smooth in the bottom of the die, so I just took the rat tail file and started smoothing this out by hand. Fortunately, the soft aluminum cut very easily and in a few minutes is done. And here's the first bend. I got a few wrinkles where I bent past 90 degrees, but overall it worked out great. The finished bend has a 5 inch outside radius, so I settled on making a 12 inch hoop, meaning I needed 2 inches between the bends. When you're starting out bending tube, it's really helpful just to lay it out on a flat surface like a welding table or even the floor. The long black line on the left is where I want my tube to end, so I need to start it where I made the small mark here. So after putting a second bend in the tube, we can mock it up and see if this is what we're after. Once it's clamped in place, we can get a pretty good idea what it's going to look like. Pretty happy with this, I think it'll work out just fine, so all we have to do is make a matching bend for the other side. And since I want these tubes to be as symmetrical as possible, I'm going to lay them on top of each other and just see where I need to tweak and re-bend as necessary to make them match. Once I'm happy with both bends, I'm going to lay them next to each other and lay out where I'm going to cut and notch both of them to fit the existing down bars. Since I'm going to notch both of these pretty close to the bends, the easiest way to do that is going to be using a grinder. Grinder notching seems intimidating, but it's really not. All you gotta do is mark the center line of the cross tube that you're meeting it up with. Then I'm gonna color in the top of this with the Sharpie. And this is gonna give me a clean spot that I can use a piece of angle iron across both bends and scratch in the center line of this tube. Using the angle iron across the top, make sure that both of my notches are gonna be in the same plane. Now all we have to do is draw an arrow halfway between the center line of the cross tube and our final notch depth. And there you go, we've got a notch tube. So now we have to repeat this on the other side. And then use a flap desk to grind as necessary to get a really good fit up between your notches and the tube it's going to weld to. And with that first tube complete, we're going to check the fitment on the bike itself and make sure we're happy with that before we go on and make another one. As you can see here, both of my tubes are not exactly the same, so I'm going to go through with the flap disc and lower the notches in one of them, the taller one, just to make sure it matches the other side perfectly.
After marking the joint locations on both sides of the bike, we're going to clean some paint off so we get a good weld. I'm going to use a piece of scrap angle iron to make sure the crash bars are held in line with the down tubes while I tack them in place. I also decided to put in a crossbar just to stiffen up the whole assembly. The only real downside to welding this in solid is now the whole down bar crash bar assembly has to be removed as one piece. As you can see, removing it as one piece isn't a big deal and makes the whole assembly a lot stronger. After moving it up to the bench, we can fully weld all the joints. After a quick scuff with the Scotch-Brite pad, we'll wipe it down with some acetone, and then use some self-etching primer, and then some black Rust-Oleum. So a couple hours worth of work and about 20 bucks in materials, we've got a custom set of crash bars that add a lot of protection and awesome look to this Trail 125. Here's a finished product and I'm really happy with how they turned out. Only thing left to do is give them a test. Looks like I won't have to straighten out that shifter anymore. Be sure and hit that subscribe button, like, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time in part 3.